It'll be Dave Blosser at quarterback. Lee Groff for fullback. Snyder and Hutton the halfback. To give it back to the running back on the right side. Good to uh, have a beautiful uh, defensive play on the part of Mike Abbott. The left end came in and, and uh, made the tackle. Great job. Well, we switched a couple of players in and out on those for Plattsburgh. That was, uh, I believe, Steve Tully carried the football that time, as they do have a lot of different running backs in the starters they gave it. We'll see how they come out this time. Tully carried the football, but uh, a gain of about four on the play as they come out of that wishbone offense. It is Schneider, Hutton, and uh, Groff at the running back position. Blotzer, the quarterback, again out of the wishbone. On second down and six, back and Blotzer gives it off the left side. Big hole, left side of Schneider. Merrill's over the 25 to the 24-yard line, and they find a marking down at the 22 of Norris. And that'll bring up a third down, big down here, third down and two to go for the Blue Devils. And all the uh, running backs out of that wishbone formation have averaged right around four or five yards a carry. So you have four running backs, and all of them can really pop at you. Big third down play at the 22-yard line. Set him down as Watford. They'll come back, he's hit the hard line. Just got a rid of it, and a Norris tight defense all over the place. Absolutely super defense. They almost caused a fumble. They hit Watson just as he pitched the ball out as Kevin Schley came in to make the stop. Super defense by the Titans, and their backs against the wall a little bit again, Burrow, and they come through again. They'll bring up fourth down and two at the 22-yard line of Norris. Oh, that was a super play in the park. Schley, he came in there, came uh, through that little bit of a gap and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. They're going to give him, well, they call it fourth and two, but a great defensive play. Rich Miller, the center for Plattsmouth, up over the ball. Blotzer takes a good look at the Norris defense. It's been giving him a lot of problems so far. Blotzer comes back. He's hit. He pitches it back to the last second. Double picks up. And the oh, first got of Liddy Hoover is going to go. He's on his way. Liddy Hoover at the 30, the 25. Turn on the way. Goodbye. Touchdown, Liddy Hoover. 70 yards. Got to let ball off. The quarterback lost and tried a lot of last thing off. Liddy Hoover was there, picked it up. At the 30-yard line of Norris, ran 70 yards in, nobody touched him. Well, Lenny Hoover had the football. You knew it was goodbye city because Hoover can move. He picked it up. Uh, I didn't get to see. I think it was Marty Lowry who came in and caused the bubble. He is the middle guard, and he came through there like lightning out of nowhere. And so Norris gets on the board first with 639 to go in the first quarter, and they'll go for a run. Let's see who will be set in there to kick it. It'll be Kenton Holtman. Normally, Mark Keckley, but Keckley's six will open. The wing back will come in to kick it in there to hold the football with Mark Machowski. The second string quarterback, he puts down the snap, a nice snap. It's on the way. Let's get it in. And I'll tell you something funny about that. Kent Holtman kicked one last week. He kicked it straight on like the old timer. And this week, he must be practicing because he kicked that strike battle. Stepped over two, two uh, steps and kicked it through. Nice job. Norris is on top, seven to nothing. Here's some more three-year sport boosters. Laverne Bridal Service in Barnston. York Agency in Barnston, BNP Mobile in Philly, Jurgen Scale Gas in Philly, Citizen State Bank in Virginia. Overding installation. Well, uh, the quarterback, I'm sure Blotz would like to try that over again. So again with a short kick. Uh, picking up the football as Lewandowski goes to the left side, picks it up at the 30 yard line, 20 yard line, and down he goes. Good coverage again by the Norris Titans. As uh, Lewandowski tried to reverse field. Wasn't able to get anywhere. It's going to be first and ten for Plattsmouth from their own 21-yard line. Well, that shows you what, uh, uh, you know, a, a team of lesser metal would have really folded after that 550-yard pass on the first play. But the North defense twice called upon. They knuckle down right now. This is their third possession by Plattsmouth, and they find themselves on their own 20-yard line. Well, the North offense has only had the ball once. Plattsmouth, let's see if they can move the ball here. Wishbone, it's Plattsmouth, comes back, goes to Groff, and is he hit hard? As that tight defense right under Doug Wallenberg, 6'2", 275-pound defensive tackle, had to make the stop. As Gary Meyer came in also to the system, so the tight defense again continues to really hit out there. They said Plattsmouth was known for their hitting. Well, I'll tell you, the Titans doing all the sticking right now. As Groff got, well, they'll give him three yards on the play, brings up second and seven. And mark it at the 23-yard line of Plattsmouth out of the wishbone as Blotzer takes the grab, comes oh! out, and hits behind the line of scrimmage. Two Titans keep him in there as Doug Wallenberg again it could, came it could. through. And I tell you, 275 pounds, extremely mobile. Just blew people out of there like there's no line in front of him. About a four-yard loss that'll bring up third down and 10 as uh, Schneider just got nowhere. 
Yeah. And right now, you know, when we talk about the line of scrimmage, and Norris is just completely dominating that offensive line. The offensive line not very big for Platt, but we'll run down those weights for you in a little bit. Norris really outweighs him. A third down and ten. Here's Dodger. He wants the pass. He comes out. He rolls on. Down to a big one. And down he goes. He got nowhere. As Marty Lowry, the little guard, came bursting through there. And again, is Big Doug Wallerberg. I would have over tonight. Jim Ratley also in on the stop. Well, they come up with a minus seven yards on that with Steve because they're back at their 13-yard line. Started on the 20, so they end up with a net of a minus seven on that one. Gee, that defense, that defense of Norris must have heard talking about the offensive line. <laughs> of course, you know, Plattsmith, I haven't been able to get the runners very much simply because before the ball's even handed off, all you see is red jerseys all with the Plattsmith people, and you never really get a chance to see who has the football. At the goal line, here's a fake punt. Here's Dennis. They're coming to the right side, up to the 20, the 25, up to the 20, up to the end line, right. he breaks free, up to the 40, the 35, he's on his way, one man to beat, Ballison catches him at the 5, knocks him down at the 2-yard line, Eddie Ballison came out of nowhere, made a saving tackle, and let's see, right at the 2-yard line, well, it's legally fair, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Eddie Ballison, number 20, I got my eye on him, but was it Rademacher? It was Randy Rademacher. You had it right, Randy Rademacher. And we mentioned he went to track in uh, last year. But man, oh man, you believe Todd Bettis broke free. They must have saw a flaw in that punch defense. And here it is, Norris again. But they're back against the wall. Randy Rademacher had outstanding speed. Todd Bettis, a super athlete. How he ever caught him, I'll never know. Had the angle on him, I guess. It looked like Bettis might have gone in. First and goal for Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh. Gets to cross up the middle. It'll be close. Let's see. Very, very close. They unpile him at the goal line. And he's going to be just short. They'll be just short. As Groff got the call, was not able to burst through there. Well, that, uh, if you ever a defense is going to be called upon, I guess they're called upon now. Boy, I tell you, that uh, Blanton House and twice have gone to the bag of tricks, and Metis has been involved in both of them. And Todd Metis, as I mentioned, probably was the best athlete on this team. He's outstanding. They go in that wishbone. They have Hutton at fullback this time. Which was down here. Blotter, he gives it up to Mill. Didn't even get a chance to see who carried the football. It's again very close with the tight defense right there. I believe it was Lee Cross who got the call. They continue to send uh, running backs in here. Here comes uh, another <coughs> substitution. Now they've got Out goes Groff and in comes uh, Winskett's in there now. Winskett. Okay. But Winskett doesn't play a fullback. Now Steve Tully. That's Steve Tully on the yeah. left side. Steve Tully. And Hutton's at fullback. And Hutton at fullback. Blatter on third down at about half a yard. They go to Hutton. He's in there. Touchdown. Hutton goes over the right side. He didn't get right much, but all he has to do is break the plane. And so with three minutes to go in the first quarter, Plattsmith creeps to within a point on a one-yard drive by Kurt Hutton. And our score is North leading at 7-6. And they'll go for one point. In there to attempt it will be Dave Schneider, one of the running backs. Watson will do the holding. This could be a big point right here. A very close, tight ball game. Here's the staff that's set down. Almost blocked. The kick is up. It's good. Boy, Randy Rademacher almost blocked that extra point. It's Rademacher. But it went through. And a score with three minutes to go in the first quarter. Going tight in seven. Flats the blue devils seven. Our three river sport boosters are Arbor State and Weimar. Weimar Bowling Lanes and Bevin. Walton Beth's uh, Corner in Weimar. Weimar Medical Clinic. Doctors Kettle, Stavison, and Nelson. State Bank of Odell, the Pawnee Republican in Pawnee City, Bailey Plumbing and Heating in Pawnee City, William Chevrolet International Harvester in Pawnee City, Christensen Real Estate and Auction Service, and Plymouth Concrete in Plymouth. Steve, one of the things I want to say about Bob Fuller, boy, I tell you, he uh, is taking some kind of a chance. I thought back to his own 13-yard line, a tough defense, and he decides to let the punter go ahead and run for it. He probably told Metis, now, if you see an opening on the right side or if you see an opening, go for it. And uh, this young man uh, is, is quite an athlete, Todd Metis. Uh, took that ball as a punt formation. Camper almost had a touchdown there. Well, really, actually, if you were to take where he had the ball, it was about a 99-yard run. He sent it right at his goal yeah, line. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right at the goal line when he took off and got down to about the two-yard line. And uh, I don't know, Randy Rademacher must be a super speedster. Oh. How he ever caught him, I don't know. An excellent blocking out front. Rademacher had to go around about three blockers. 
So they'll line it up on the far left uh, hash mark when they kick it off. Back to receive will be Russell Robertson standing at his own five-yard line. Again, it will be Schneider to kick it off from the 40 as they set it over on the left hash mark. Kicking to a slight win into the south end zone. Here's the boot taken at the 15-yard line out to the 20. The 25, the 30, and the brought down to the 35 is Russell Robertson. You know, this is only their second possession from scrimmage. They had the first possession and uh, then had a punt. The next time they picked it up and ran for a touchdown. Or the fumble. On the fumble. So, and then here we are, 2 minutes 54 seconds to play, and only their second possession. Uh, this will be their fourth or fifth play from scrimmage. So it'll be first and 10 for the Northern Titans from their own 35 yard line. Nice return by Russell Roberts, who picked it up about the 15 yard line, got it out to the 35, and he is a dangerous one. Again, we're going to be watching that offensive line. That might be where the battle is won or lost. Wide to the left comes Randy Rattlemaker. Open goes short to the left side. Robertson and Balderson are the running backs. Hoover comes back, gives it off to Robertson. He gets nowhere. He's snowed under on the left side of the line. That time, the battle won by that defensive line. Denny Larson, Dave Sharp, all there to make the stop, along with Troy Porter. Actually, that time, Platt was show with a three down linemen and, and uh, two standing on one end and one on the other. So I guess you could call that about a six-man line only a three down linemen. I, it looks like they're shifting back and forth from that defense. They haven't been in, in uh, defensive often enough to really tell what they're doing. They go with sort of a six-man uh, front. Fear formation. Hoover slides down the line. He pitches deep to the line. Oh, run it. And down goes the running back. I believe it was Paulson. He is hit hard by Dave Sharp. Threw him for about a six-yard loss. And I didn't get to see, I believe, I didn't know if that was Paulson or Robertson. Uh, they were across the white, uh, clear across the field. Run out of bounds at the 31-yard line. That's going to bring up third down and 14. Well, that defense or plastic still looks like pretty tough, too. Try to make her wide to the left of the wide side of the field. Open on the short side. Balderson to Robertson, the running back. Hoover marks him out and third down along. In motion, goes open. Let's see if they spread out. They do come to the left side. They're looking for open out here. Hoover's got some time. Throws it out. Got a lot of maker. It's complete. He is he's nailed. At the 45-yard line, and Rademacher drops the ball when he's hit, and he's going to get up very slow. He was really hit by Todd Bettis. Almost just really, and the Rademacher's not going to get up for a while. He's still on the ground. Coach Pence is out there helping him out. And I'll tell you, Randy Rademacher took a shot you wouldn't believe. An outstanding hit by Todd Bettis. That was just good, clean, hard football. And Randy's up now. I believe he just had the wind knocked out of him. He's going to come over and take a rest on the bench. It was a beautiful pass by Hoover. They had enough for the first down right after right. Parker. Perfect. And they would have had the first down. He caught the football, but he took such a tremendous shot from Todd Bettis that it's going to make up a fourth down. They'll have to put it away. Two men deep to receive a Plattsburgh. It's a low snap picked up and finally booted away. Hoover usually punts it. This time, uh, punting it was Tim Bradley, I believe. Picked up by Plattsburgh at their own 35, up to the 40. The 45, this is Hutton. And he gets it into Norris territory. At the 47-yard line, so it's Ben Plattsburgh dominating the ball game so far. A minute two to go in the first quarter. We're tied at seven apiece. It's been the Plattsburgh offense against the Norris defense. The Swanton Co-op Elevator is one of our three sport boosters, along with Case Pot Equipment and Beatrice Farmers Grain of Cortland, Bush Hog Eating Beds and Pickerel, and Farmers Co-op Elevator in Pickerel. Well, let's see what the Norris defense can do here. They're going to be called again with uh, Plattsburgh in Norris territory at the 46-yard line. Blotter, quarterback, 6'1", 170-pound senior, marks out the signal. Fakes to the fullback, comes back left side. Big hole on the right side, a fumble on the play. Not able to hang on to the football was Steve Tully, and Norris in the game to have the football. Let's wait and see for the official word. Tully gained about nine yards, and apparently they called the play dead. Well, the pursuit of Norris is that they faked up the middle line and all the, the ends pinched in and everything, bringing it up on the left side. Tully found a uh, good running over on that left corner. So Steve Tully picks up nine, and I believe he goes back out of the ball game. They continue to shift all kinds of new people very hard to try to keep them all straight. So it'll be second down and one as they keep hunting at fullback. I don't know if Groff has been hurt or not, but he's uh, been putting Hutton at fullback. Here's Watcher, quarterback. Fakes, fakes the one man, goes to Hutton on the right side. He'll have it up for the first down as he sneaks out there, gets close to the 35-yard line. And I believe they'll 
Let's see where they mark the football. Should be enough for the first down. It is. It'll be first and ten for the Plants of the Blue Devils at the Norris 35-yard line. Three seconds to go here in the first quarter. We're tied up at seven apiece. Again, they shuffle people in and out in that backfield, and that's the most difficult thing for sportscasters. Mark Winscott back in there. And that's play in the first quarter of play. So we've completed one from Seacrest Field in Lincoln. In Class B title game, our score all tied up. Norris 7, Plattsville 7. This is another Free River Sport Boosters presentation. Some of our members include Southeast Community College in Gatherson Fairbury, Pearl Sales Company in Bremen, Kansas, Cold Grove Contractors in Crider, Green Company in Odell, Marvin Holbein Real Estate in Beatrice Thompson and Sun Ariel Spring in Wymore. Excuse me, Burrow and Steve. Uh, we have a report now from Brad Horky on the Hanover Ball Game. Go ahead, Brad. As you move to the right side, good tight defense again. Threw them for a loss. It'll bring up about third down and ten. They move the ball back at the uh, 37-yard line of Norris. And Burrow, those Hanover Wildcats are unbelievable. And uh, Brad Horky doing a good job on the you report. I'll tell you something interesting here. Right at the end of the first quarter, Plattsmouth has about 150 yards total yardage. Norris Titans have a plus four. Norris, no first down. Uh, the uh, Plasma Blue Devils with two. Seven to seven ball game. However, this is KMAZ in Beatrice, Nebraska. Third down and 13 to go for Plasma at the North 37 yard line. They go with the pitch. Here come the Titans in a hurry. And they have the screen put on. The good defense. They'll get thrown for a loss. Beautiful play by Doug Wallenberg. He has been outstanding here. I can't know, but also coming up and Bill. Doug Wallenberg at 275 pounds came all the way from the right tackle position, went clear across the field, and made the tackle on the screen play. They had the right play called as the Norris went with the blitz that time. Everybody was coming, but Wallenberg stayed home like the outside tackle should do, and Open came up from his uh, cornerbacking position, made the stop only fourth down and 13. Plattsmouth showing putt, you never know. This is Menace. He gets his foot into it. This one goes right up the chimney and comes down with a very short kick and takes a Norris Titan bounce and then goes out of bounds. It'll be first and ten for Norris from their own 21 yard line. Mark River Sport Boosters include Farmers Union Co op Association, Steiner, Elk Creek, and Bircher, the Billy Tavern, Billy Bank. Holtz Grocery in Philly, Joy Farm Supply in Philly. We also want to say thank you. The State Bank of Burchard, Ware Brothers Mortuary in Pawnee City, Pawnee Livestock Incorporated in Pawnee, Ware Brothers Furniture in Pawnee City, and Livestock, or Lewiston Cooperative Credit Association. First and 10 from the Norris 21. Lenny Hoover brings him out, trying to get off the scoreboard. Beer formation, open wide on the right. Rademacher short on the left. Over keeps the football, pitches back last second. Robertson loses the football, gets back on it, but they'll lose five yards as it goes back to the 15-yard line. And the Norris offense just not able to get going tonight, having all kinds of problems, and they haven't really been able to generate much. But on that Norris defense, Doug Wallenberg, anytime you weigh, uh, you're 6'2 and you weigh 275, somebody's going to be looking at you. But when you can move like Doug Wallenberg, a lot of people are going to be looking at you. He's been outstanding tonight. Let's see what the Norris Titan defense can do here on second down and 15 from their own 15-yard line. Wide receivers again split to each side. Rademacher and Oakland, the receivers. Robertson and Balderson are the running back. Hoover takes a long count. Gets the snap from Bradley. Takes the one. That pops over the center. He's got the man. I believe that's Craig Prince who's tied in. Loses the football. Let's see who has it. Prince lost it as he was hit. And uh, let's see. Well, they say... Plattsmith has the football. They're giving it to Plattsmith. It looks like Page might have been down, bro. It's very close. Yeah. He was on, laying on the ground with the football, kind of bounding around at his chest. Sometimes they might call that dead, but apparently a live football there. Craig Payne's beautiful reception, but here's Plattsmith again. And again, it's up to that north side defense. They've been called on all night. It'll be first and ten for Plattsmith at the Norris 24-yard line, 8.57 to go. First half, our score is 7 7 Norris and Plattsmouth Class B title. Blocker at quarterback. Sets him down on first and ten. He comes back. A broken play, and he is nailed behind the line of scrimmage. A broken play, and in to make the tackle was Steve Elsey. Came brought in from the defensive end along with Marty Lowry. Lowry plays middle guard, held the defensive end, and they both came blowing in there. Blotter turned around, and there was nobody there. All three running backs went to the right side. We have a timeout called by Plattsmouth, but timeout on the field. 836, uh, 8.36 to go in the first half. Our score, Noah 7, Plattsmouth 7. Three sport boosters include Adams Equipment, Adams State Bank, Lloyd Seaton, Seaton Adams, Wilkins Store, and Adams, Jackers Super 8 Motel. In case any of you may be tuning in, tuning in late, 
the Hanover Wildcats leading in their playoff game down Hanover, Kansas, by a score of 14 to nothing. The Bank of Sterling, Cozy Kitchen Recreation Center in Sterling, Tecumseh Building alone, Tecumseh Floral and Gibson, Johnson County Bank in Tecumseh. Some of our three of sport booster members, 7-7 seven seven tie ball game here at Seacrest Field in Lincoln, a perfect night for a football game. You think this was mid-October instead of mid-November. Uh, Out comes Blasters on second down on 15 from the north 30-yard line. And Bill will, have, will ask for your help once in a while on these uh, different players coming in. It looks as though uh, Blasters comes out in a different formation. They go to break the bone. Kind of, kind of a, almost a uh, kind of a split veer formation. It is a split veer. Back is Blasters. Goes over the middle. It's got the man open. Uh, about a six-yard pickup covered well by the Norris defense in there to make the stop with Steve Elsey. The pass uh, complete to Todd Metis. Metis uh, catching the football. Tim Hunick also into the fence on the tackle. Well, it was a pickup of about seven yards. It brings up a third down and seven from the 21 and a half yard line of Norris. That time they went to a split bear formation. They'll come out in the split bear again. Running backs are Tully and Schneider. Watcher, the quarterback. Sends two wide receivers on the right side, a wide receiver on the left side. Back to pass is Watcher. He's got some time. Goes over the middle. A man open. It's complete for a first down as he hits Randy Detmer right over the middle. And maybe it'll be very close. I thought he had a, well, they do call a first down. So first and 10 from the 12-yard line of Norris is Plattsmouth again knocking on the door. We're tied at 7 apiece, 7.49 to go first half. And Plattsmouth's offense has really gotten the brakes tonight, and the Norris offense has just not been able to get anything going. Well, they had that ball, the, their second possession, they had the ball at the 29, this time at the 24, and then that punt they had at the 47, so they had good field position all the time. Back to the wishbone formation, Blotzer, Black tonight, he comes back, fakes the one man, scoots down the line, right side, wants to keep the football, pitches back to Tully, the last moment, Tully stays to his feet, scoots down, let's see whether or not they mark him out of bounds. He thought he was knocked down to the five-yard line, he was very close to the out-of-bounds on the other side That's of the right. field. I thought Bowlerson was going to knock him out at the 10. He got a piece of the action, but uh, fine running on the part of Tully. Tully able to keep on his feet and gained eight yards. It'll be second down and three from the five-yard line of Norris. They mark it just inside the five. So Plasma is really knocking on the door here. Golden opportunity. They're in that wishbone again. Watcher marks him down on second down. Comes back, gives it to Graff over on the right side. He stacked up about the three-yard line. That's Steve Winscott who came into the ball game. Winscott carrying the football. So they, they've gone with five different backs down the backfield. Rob, uh, Rob Robertson in to make the stop. Along with help from Marty Lowry. And Lowry's been uh, getting a workout tonight. Well, let's see where they mark the football. It'll be very close to a first down. And uh, girl, uh, I'm amazed at the, the depth Plasmus has in the backfield. And as we mentioned, it's hard to keep track of these fellows, but you have five different backs, you go in there, and yep. three of them average about five yards a pop. You're talking about a heck of a backfield. And another thing is, they keep, they say these halfbacks are also run as fullback. Now, they've, they've kept moving them around so that you can't get familiar with one on one position because one time they'd be running at fullback, then they'd be running at right halfback, and the next time you stand over the sidelines watching the action. Well, well Meadows will line up uh, on the end on the right side. Back to the running backs are Schneider and Hutton. I believe uh, Wins got a fullback. Wins again. got a fullback, blocked to the fullback. Well, it is first and goal. They go over the right side, carry football is Hutton. He scoots, breaks the tackle, he's in for the touchdown. He was hit at the three-yard line, broke two tackles and scooted in from two yards out. And Plattsburgh goes up on top by a score of 13 to seven with 6.56 to go in the first half. That was a super run, Steve, because he was stopped at three-yard line. He slid off that tackle. I thought it was a uh, tackle was made by the, the right side of the Norris line, but he slid off it and got in for the touchdown. You know, bro, I, I called I call the, the row. It was Kurt Hutton, right? Right. Okay, I, I called it, and then I was thinking of the score. Well, in uh, will be Meadows to try the point after. Here's the boot. Almost blocked. It will be a little bit wide to the left. The PAT no good. And our score was 6.56 to go in the first half. Plots of 13, Noah 7. Montreal River Sport Boosters include the First National Bank of Summerfield, Kansas, Brett Place in Barnston, Briggs Brokerage in Barnston, Farmers Cooperative Company in Virginia, Rockford and Burchard, Okito State Bank in Okito, Kansas. We'd also like to say, and these are some folks down Hanover, Kansas, Settle Lot Checks in Hanover, Kansas, 
Community State Bank in Hanover, and the State Federal Savings and Loan Association. Just a few of our three of our sport boosters association that bring you all this exciting football action, and we'll have lots more activities right here on KMAC Stereo 93, the place to be in Beatrice, Nebraska. Well, girl, you know, not to discredit the Plasma's defense because they've had played outstanding, but we're not seeing the normal Norris offense tonight. They have really done nothing so far, and uh, they've just not been able to get anything going. A lot of mistakes have hurt them quite a bit tonight. And they trail right now 13 to 7 as Plasma's get set to kick it off. Playing at the five yard line is Eddie Balderson. It's a short kick. Let's see who picked this one up. That's it's a script and it goes out of bounds. It goes out of bounds, so they'll have to bring it back as uh, Rob Robertson was waiting to pick up the football. I thought but he was going to wait to see if it's going to go out of bounds. You know, of course, uh, once in a while, I know I forget it once in a while. I've seen that happen at a football game. That's a live football. And they, uh, if the team that kicks off can fall, it belongs to them. Right, They're right, because they did go 10 yards. And I, I yeah. should correct myself. I'm used to the old rule where they brought it back another 10 yards and kicked it yeah. over. And there to clear the way, Kevin Slake and Scott Most. Most the only junior starter on this uh, Norris Titan offense. And now they're scrambling around. Apparently uh, a little bit of equipment problem. They're going to have to send another block in there. I believe that Scott Most did have a problem with his helmet. Marty Lowry did. And now, what are they going to call? The referees, well, they finally called the timeout. I believe uh, Norris wanted to get things straightened out. Or are they going to... Uh, the referee saying it was their timeout. I don't know. They're going to charge Norris with a timeout. I think is what they're going to do. Yep. See, there it comes. Norris charged with a timeout. 6.20 to play in the first half. Plasmus leading Norris by a 13-7 to 7 score. More three of sport boosters, Sterling Green, Dick and Hale in, in Wymore. Went speed and Sterling. Teams that we have seen them uh, so far this year, Steve. And, of course, we both had the opportunity to see him twice prior to this ball game. They unofficially do not have a first down. And here we have only six minutes. They don't, did they just make one? No, I was, uh, no, no, oh, I was, okay. okay. I don't think they have a first down. We have 6.20 to play in this first half. They had a couple of fumbles, and boy, those were costly. Platt was on the, the long end of the score, 13 to 7, but uh, uh, we've seen our teams before. We're not going to sell them short. It'll be third down of a yard for the Titans, just short of the 50-yard line by about a yard. Wide receivers on each side. They go to Bullis, has got a big hole. He's out to the 45, the 40, and now to the 35-yard line. Eddie Bullis, the quick one. And you know who was out there blocking ahead of him? Kenton Oltman. He, he was mad because there's two of them down. He didn't get both of them. They only got one. <laughs> Oltman is a very feisty wing back, and he can clear it away. He did a good job that time, along with help of Kevin Slake and Scott Moses. At least they got both back in there. After they took that time out, he got his helmet fixed, and he got back out there. Well, well, let's see. They did the, they put another man in there. Let's see who that was. That's uh, Marty Lowry in there playing the right tackle spot. So Lowry cleared the way. It'll be first and ten from the 35 of Plattsman. Here's the Titans. Lenny over. Out of the rear. Comes back. Wants to pass the football. He's got a man open. It's complete to open for about an eight-yard pickup. Beautiful call. And Brewer, you won't see a much more difficult pass than that. Hoover that time went to his right side. Rolled out to the right, looks across to the left as Oldman was cutting far from the left side across the right side of the field. He threw to the opposite side of the field, caught Oldman wide open, and it was about a seven-yard pick up. We'll call it second down and three as they now place that football at the 29-yard line of Plattsmouth. Again, beer formation. Oldman on the right, Rademacher on the left. The risk goes down the line, gives off the ball. and hit a big hole over there, and it looks as though... That right side, that right side of the offensive Norris line is eating them up right now. Just super blocking another first down. Just when we got through saying they haven't shown us much, they're starting to eat them up now. I was just going to say that they're not going to uh, Robinson much. Well, that's because he's not in there. I don't know if he has an injury or what, but he's not in the ball game. And for him is Tim Hunick, a 5'10", 142-pound junior. And Hunick uh, is the other running back, and so they're going to the experienced one, Eddie Balderson. Hunick and Balderson, the running back, wide receivers on each side of the field. First and uh, 10 for Norris. The river comes back, gives to Balderson on a counter right. Balderson loses his footing and goes down. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. That would be about it. They're at, uh, well, they're going to give him a couple yards loss as they mark it back to the 24 yard of Plattsmouth. It'll bring up a second down and 12. And uh, Norris has got to be hurting a little bit without uh, Russell Robinson there. Bro, I don't, I'm kind of looking for I'm his checking. number. And I, don't, I don't see him down on the field. I'm checking right now, Steve. I don't either. Again, it's Hunick and Bollison in the backfield. Wide receiver split to each side. 
in the veer. Kruger fires him out on second down and 12. Scoots back once the pass is going wrong. It's got open out there. A two-run touchdown! Unbelievable catch by Ken Melvin. A man all over him. He simply stole the ball at the goal line. Scampered in and ties his score at 13 apiece. Steve, I don't want to say I'm a prophet, but I talked to the broadcasters from the Plasma Station. I just watched 34. He has the uncanny knack for getting in the open. I don't care where it's at, he's going to get the football. We're calling a 24-yard pass completion from Lenny Hoover to the man, the money man, Kent Moltman. And I believe Holtman will try the PAT. Could be a big one here. Majeski to hold the ball, puts it down, a nice hold, and it's blocked. Platt was in there to block it. Pressing through there. To get a piece of that football was Troy Porter. Porter came in and blocked it. It was a little bit of a low kick for Kenton. As we mentioned, that was probably a big key for North. Not able to have Mark Keckley tonight. Keckley, an outstanding kicker. And they do miss him. So with 4.14 to go in the first half, our score, North 13, Plattsmouth 13. Three of our sport boosts include Schreer Hardware, Plumbing, Heating, and Appliance, and Bacon, Western Mobile Oil Company, and Western. It helps the North out. The fans, of course, come to their feet. And any time you get the offense back in gear, they got to feel like they do have a chance to come back in. You can hear that noise crowd right below us. Here's the kick. Uh, kind of a short kick. And taken at the 25-yard line by Winscott. Winscott scoops over the 35, and he's going to be close to the 40-yard line, or close to the 35-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Plattsmouth. Again, we're all tied up with 13-13, 4 to go first half. And so far, North getting their touchdown from the 70-yard fumble recovery and return by Lenny Hoover. And a 24-yard uh, pass completion from Hoover to open. The two uh, touchdowns, a one-yard run by Kurt Hutton and a three-yard run by Kurt Hutton for Plattsmouth. The Blue Devils have the football at their own 34-yard line, first and 10. Watcher marks him out. Out of the wishbone, he comes back to pass. Watcher looking long. He throws a little bit short. And really nobody there as his receiver's a little bit held up. And Randy Rademacher has been able to see the football. He may have been able to pick that off, but Randy not quite able to get to it. And really, you take a look at Randy Rademacher. He just looks like he could just fly all night long. He can really move. He's got the just the right build and everything. I know uh, uh, they're kind of looking for him track season again. He can fly. Todd Meadows really knew a crowd of that. Of course, he's their fine end. Uh, he went down and had uh, double coverage on him. Meadows comes wide to the left. And they go in that split beer. They send a receiver in the slot on the right side. Split beer formation. They lose the football. Blotzer picks it back up. Now he'll pass long. And he overthrows the intended receiver. He's looking out there for Kurt Hutton coming out of the uh, slot position. But overthrow him. And that'll bring up a third down. They almost uh, lost the football. Blotzer was lucky to get that one back. 13 to 13. 343 to go first half. Three of our sport boosters include Panama Locker in Panama, the Metropolitan Life Insurance in Kansas, First State Bank in Hickman, Hallam Bank in Bremer's Fire Mutual in Bremen, Kansas also, Leo's Jewelry in Bacon, Ideal Grocery in Bacon, Fairbury implemented Mr. Pete's in Fairbury and Jocko's in Jackson. Third and ten for the Plastic Blue Devils from their own 34-yard line. Watcher has them in the wishbone this time. He wants to pass a mix-up. They go to their draw play. It'll get nowhere. They really had a mix-up on the play that time. Hutton got the football, and he was immediately met by a bunch of those uh, Norris Titan defenders. Marty Lowry again there to make the stop. And Marty, at 6'2", 175 pounds, plays much bigger than that. You would think he's larger than that. But again, they like to go with, a, I guess, a strong, very quick uh, middle guard and hope he can burst through there. Marty, an uh, excellent wrestler, and he showed his ability there. Plattsmouth will have to punt it away on fourth down and eight. Bettis back there to punt the ball. He gets kind of a short, booming kick. It takes a bound at the 35-yard line. Picked up at the 20 is Munich, or is it Arnott? Arnott, I think. We'll wait and see. It's taken up to the 21-yard line. And I believe you might be right, Burl. I know I'm right, Steve. Because <laughs> I looked when he went back. Okay. I, I did that. Of course, you watched the ball. I went back as, as yeah, Jimmy ran back. He's a, a feisty little uh, sophomore. Mike John Hutton, 30-pounder. He's not afraid of him. Norris now at the 21-yard line. We're tied up at 13 apiece. 2.54 to go in the first half. No one's to try to move the football from their own 21. Lenny Hoover at quarterback. Waits for the snap from Tim Rutley. They take to one man, give the ball to on the counter play. He'll get nowhere. Beautiful defensive play. In there to make the stop was Rich Ondrak. Ondrak, a linebacker, came in there in a hurry. I see Russ Robertson down on the sidelines, and he's standing up there. Doesn't uh, 
of course, we can't tell from here what the problem is, but he has not played the last two series. I don't know if he made an adjustment in the locker room or not. He may have been gone for a short while. We'll find out later. He is not in there now. They go in the beer formation with Hudick and Balderson on second down and eight, a gain of about two last play. They give to Balderson on the right side. He breaks one tackle, breaks two, picks up a few as he gets it out to the 24-yard line. Again, beautiful defense by Plattsmith in there to make the stop, Mike Pulitzer and Dennis Larson. Those two fellows came up in a hurry. And this defense for Plattsmith has impressed me quite a bit. 153 to go in the first half. We're tied at 13 apiece. We may end up at halftime that way. Norris kind of a little conservative right now. Dolphin goes wide to the left. Rademacher comes on the right side. Again, it's Tim Hunick and Eddie Balderson, the setback. Silver waits for the snap on third down and five. Slides down the right side. Now wants to pass. The flag goes up. He looks for Oatman, and Oatman is hit as he gets the football. And we'll see what the call be. And flag on the field. I see that Plattsmith has gone out of that six-man line. They're in a five-man line with three linebackers. Uh, figuring that if they run, they'll have those linebackers close. The penalty will be against the Norris Titans. However, they're not in that six-man line like they were earlier. They figure that uh, probably got hurt a little bit on that when Norris goes to the air. Out of the talking over with the co-captain of the Plattsmouth Blue Devils, Mark Pulsifer. And I kind of, I just happen to think, I wonder if uh, one of their illustrious graduates, Rick Lindquist, is in the crowd tonight. Flying cornerback for the uh, Big Red. Three interceptions last week against Kansas and State. Outstanding game. He had no interceptions going into that ball game. Burrow ended up with three last week, tied his school record. And they got a pretty, pretty fair basketball player last year, too, by the name of uh, McFarland that's now with the Big Red. Waiting for the snap is Hoover. He gets the snap, gets away kind of a short kick. Will be taken at the 45-yard line. As Rodemaker tries to make the stop and finally brought down is Sean Dillon. So they have yet another person running the football for Plasma. I think everybody gets a chance to run it. Next thing we'll see one of the tackles take off of the football. But it'll be Plasma in pretty good field position at their own 47 yard line. They have 121 to work with. So the Norris defense bro, really hasn't played that bad tonight. They've, they've had their backs against the wall as uh, Plasma has had all the breaks here in the first half. They've had excellent field position and uh, have gotten fumbles deep in the territory. Norris defense has really played fairly well. We're tied at 13 apiece. I was going to say, Plasma has had, this is their eighth possession, Steve, so they've had that football a lot of this first half. Blotzer comes back, gives to Hutton over on the left side, finds a big hole, gains about five yards as he crosses the 50 into Norris territory at the 47-yard line. Well, Tully has been their big ground grader so far. We have him for about 25 yards and four carries. Actually, I have anticipated that Hutton would be the guy that would really be the uh, fly in the ointment for Norris, but that's his only second carry. He has seven yards. Tully well, goes at that time. Dave Schneider back in for him. Waiting for the snap on second down of three. As Blotzer, he comes back, gives it to Schneider on the right side. Schneider is snowed under in a hurry. Good defense again by the Titans. In to make the stop is Kevin Slake. And let's see, he had a lot of assistance out there. Uh, I believe it's Doug Wallenberg again in to help out. And Lenny Hoover comes over the side to get some instructions. Timeout on the field, called by Plasters with the timeout. 31 seconds to go in the first half, our score. Noah, 13, Plasters, 13. Three of our sport boosters include the r &L Oil in Barston, <laughs> Ray's Grocery in Barston, J&J &J Trenching in Barston, Village Pantry in Odell, Sportsman's Barber Style in Beatrice. Also, we'd like to say thank you to the Farmers Bank of Claytonia, Vets Apco Service in Claytonia, the Ball Sundries in DeWitt, Peterson Manufacturing Company in DeWitt, Adams Produce. Well, it's starting to try to get some of these plasma players memorized, but they keep playing at different positions. It makes it very difficult. They've gone with Grimes, uh, Groff, Schneider, Hutton, Tully, and uh, Winscott, the five different running backs, and that's not even including their fine quarterback, Blotzer. Blotzer, an outstanding quarterback. It's going to be third down at about three to go, 31 seconds to go in the first half. We're tied at 13 apiece. Plaster with the football. They're in North Titan territory, right at the 45-yard line. They come out of that split beer with a man at Hutton in the slot on the right side, man wide to the left. Here's Blotzer, wants to pass to the man over the middle. This is Bettis. He's got the running room. And breaks one tackle, finally goes down to the 40 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Plattsmouth. Todd Bettis, an outstanding receiver. He is the leading receiver for Plattsmouth. And uh, he, let's see, he caught 30 passes. No, he, let's see, we're looking for, we'll find him somewhere. He caught a total of 16 passes for 384 yards during the regular season. In the playoffs, he's had eight receptions for 138 yards. 
He's had a total of five touchdowns in the regular season, two touchdowns in the playoffs. So an outstanding uh, receiver. You wouldn't uh, quite think that with the uh, wishbone, but what Plantsman does, they come out in a split veer where they break the wishbone and, and put a fellow in the slot. 25 seconds to go in the first half. We're not enough at 13 apiece. The ball at the Norris Titan 40-yard line where it's first and 10 for the Plantsman Blue Devils. And again, uh, right now, I think North would just like to go in the locker room at halftime and make some adjustments. They have been outplayed here in the first half, but their Titan defense has kept it a tie ball game. Meadows comes wide to the left. They put a man with a spot on the right side. Again, in that split there. Watson sets him down, marks him out. He'll come back to pass. He's got some time, and now he's under a big rush. He'll have to hurry. Throws with Barnes. Got a man out there. Meadows at the goal line. Touchdown! Tom Meadows all around. Outstanding play by Watson. Watson is under a big rush by Wallenberg. He had a hurry to throw. Meadows was all alone. He outran everybody. And it was a 40-yard touchdown completion. And that's going to put Plattsmith up top 19 to 13. Steve, just before, just before that play was going to go, I was thinking, I was going to say, just so they don't let him get a cheap foot here just before the half. 40-yard pass completion from Blotzer to uh, Metis, and we were just talking about Todd Metis. I guess we had that one picked out right. Todd Metis, fine reception. And suddenly, Plattsmith goes up on top by a 19-13 score. This could be very big right here as they go for two. They'll go for the two points as they did miss one conversion. Watson calls him out, waits for the snap, comes back, a little bit of a mix-up. Now he wants to pass the football. He rolls out. He's under a big rush. Now throws it to the opposite side. It'll be knocked down incomplete. So they fail the PAT. And with 17 seconds to go in the first half, our score, Plattsmith Blue Devils leading number one Mike Norris, 19-13. And set to kick it off is the Plattsmouth Blue Devils picked up at the 15-yard line out to the 20, out to the 30-yard line, out to the 35 with two carrying that football. Hunnick. It is Hunick. Hunick with a nice game. They'll mark it at the 30-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 Norris from their own 30 with only 12 seconds remaining in the half. They trail 19 to 13. And had it not been for Lenny Hoover's 70-yard return of a fumble for a touchdown, Norris could be in in big trouble. They actually got on the scoreboard first, 6-0. The Plasmas has come back in a hurry. The Norris Titan offense just has not been able to generate much here in the first half. Well, the clock runs out, so we've completed two quarters of play from the Seacrest Field of Lincoln. Our score to go to the first quarter. A 70-yard fumble return by Lenny Hoover and made it 6-0. The PAT was good by Kent Oldman and a Masalado. That was three minutes ago, first quarter. Platform uh, pulled within one when Kurt Hutton went over for one yard. PAT by Dave Schneider was good, and it was tied at 7-7. Then in the second quarter, 6.36 to go in the first half. A three-yard run by Kurt Hutton to Platform on top, 13-7. to The PAT failed with 4.14 to go in the first half. Norris came back on a 24-yard pass uh, completion from Lenny Hoover to Kent Oldman to make it 13-13. The PAT failed. Then with 17 seconds to go in the half, Plattsmouth got on the board to make it 19-13 on a 40-yard pass from Dave Watson to top and a score at the half, 19-13. It'll be uh, Norris kicking off Plattsmouth, or excuse me, Plattsmouth kicking off Norris to receive. A little unusual, Steve. Plattsmouth is going to kick off. They're going to kick off into the wind. That means they want that win the fourth quarter. Very uh, smart observation, Burl, as uh, they do have yeah. the wind. is Very yeah. seldom you ever see this. All right. It, it is gusting quite a bit, and I know Coach Tom Osborne in Nebraska would never do that. He likes to have the wind right away and try to go ahead. Plattsmouth kicks into the wind. It's a yeah. short kick. Ball is it. We'll have it at the 15-yard line, out to the 20, the 25, and down he goes at the 26-yard line. Good tackle in on the play by Joe Ostis. Ostis in to make the stop. It'll be first and 10 for the Norris Titans at their own 26-yard line. And, bro, I didn't get an opportunity to hear what Randy said, but I can pretty much imagine what he said. I caught the tail end of it, and uh, Plattsmouth has come to play football tonight. They lead it 19-13. to We're just underway in the second half of play. Class B title game, Seacrest Field in Lincoln, about 5,000 plus here to watch this one. As Norris has the football first, it'll be Lenny Hoover out of the veer. Calls him out with the man on the spot on the right side. They go in this direction play. The ball this time to Balmerson. He'll get a few as he crosses the 25 up to about the 28-yard line. And uh, I did get a check. Russ Robinson has a hand injury. He did sustain an injury, I believe, in the, either the pious game, I think, when he first hurt that hand. 
and it continues to bother him, and uh, he's having a hard time hanging on the football. If you remember, he did lose one of our fumble ones, and I guess that's the reason. He has a, a sore hand, and that makes it rough on a running back. Rademacher comes wide to the left, Oldman goes to the right side, short side of the field. And Hoover marks him out on second down and seven. Wait for the snap from Brutley, comes back, takes the one, man passes over the middle, it's complete! He hits the tight end, Craig Green, just short of the 40-yard line at the 39, only a first and 10. Brave, and uh, that's exactly what Dennis Poole told me prior to the ball game what he was going to do tonight if they tried to uh, uh, double team on Kent Oldman. He'd go to that fine tight end they do have, Craig Range, and what a luxury that is, to be able to uh, go to three or four different receivers. And Rademacher, another fine one. Rademacher comes wide to the left. Oldman will go in the slot on the left side. In the there again, first and ten from their own 39 are the Titans. Hoover waits for the snap, takes a long count, comes back, scoots down the left side, gives it off to Balderson on the left side. He's been right at the line of scrimmage, and maybe throwing for a yard loss. In to make the stop, I believe, uh, in there is Dave Sharp. See, the Norris only had 26 yards rushing in the first half, and of course that just is not Norris football at all. We had 44 yards passing, and on the opposite side, last was 119 yards rushing, 111 passing. So, we're really uh, coming up on the uh, short end. We'll, we'll sneak in some of those statistics on Russ Robertson to show you how valuable it is to the team. He hasn't been able to play, and that's uh, been one of the factors. Second down and 10 for Norris. They go again on the misdirection. Hoover keeps it, and he will get maybe a yard, and that is all. Platts was not being fooled at all. This is the same kind of thing they did to Creekville, and it worked very effectively, but Plattsmouth has really scouted well, and I heard Randy York say what a great job Robert Fuller has done coaching. He certainly has. For a first-year coach, has been outstanding. They marked the ball just to inside, or just outside of the 40-yard line of Norris. It'll bring up third down and nine. The Titans uh, having a hard time moving that football. 19 to 13, Plattsmouth leads it, 9.31 to go in the third quarter of play. Well, you'd have to think Kenton Oltman on this one, third and nine, Steve. Oltman in on the slot on the left side of the field, right to make her wide, back to pass his Hoover. He looks for Oltman, he goes over the middle, and there he goes. Kenton Oltman can't hang on the football. He dropped one there. It was in his hands. He fell down, could hang on to it. It would have been enough for the first down. And, bro, you call it right to a tee, and, boy, that's the first time this year I've seen Kenton Oltman drop one. It was a little bit yeah. low, but a catchable pass, and, and Kenton just fell on the ground and couldn't quite hang on to it. It's kind of a wobbly pass, and those are a little bit hard to catch sometimes. Oh, yeah. So Lenny Hoover will drop back to punt the football, and bro, that hyperextended knee is kind of unusual. Apparently it must not be the one that he kicks with, but it has to be uh, still difficult to punt with any kind of knee injury. Here's the snap. It's a good snap. A high zooming punt. They taken it to the 20-yard line by Hutton. Crosses up to 25, to 30, and out to the 31-yard line. And say, I'll tell you, Steve, it was a good thing that the tackle made by, uh, that was Kevin Schlake. Had he not made it, he was in that initial group down the field, he would have had about 30 yards for anybody who would have been able to get on the shot at him. So let's take our hat off to Kevin Schlake on that one. Now let's see if that Norris defense can really buckle down. They're going to have to. They'll mark it at the Platts of the 31-yard line. The Blue Devils leading it by six points. 9.06 to go third quarter. In the wishbone is Platts. Watts here at quarterback. He's gone there all night long. Several running backs will pick him up as they go along. They take to one man, give to Hutton on the left side. He crosses the 35, close to the 36-yard line. A pickup of about uh, four or five on the play. Let's see where they mark the football. And they'll mark it at the 35. And, bro, tell me if I'm wrong, but I just heard the PA now. It sounds like the same one as at the Nebraska game. It could be. We'll have to... No, it is, it is because... It sounds very close. It. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure sounds very similar. It'll be second down and six for the Plants of the Blue Devils at their own 36-yard line. Back is Blanton. He went to pass over the middle. It's covered. They'll have to keep the football, and down he goes. He wanted to go to that slanting pass over the middle, but the Titans... Uh, the defensive backs had knocked down the intended receivers. He didn't have anybody to go to. He had to keep uh, the football game to a couple. Yes, and that's going to bring about third and five. Yes, who was there? Doug Wallenberg. What an outstanding night he's having. And, bro, I'm surprised at his mobility. That's, he takes that after his uncle. His uncle is my neighbor. <laughs> and I play golf with his, another one of his other uncles. So. And he's an outstanding heavyweight he's, wrestler. He's a really place well in this ball game. It'll be third down at about uh, four to go. And 38 yard out of Plattsmouth. Here's Blanter. He comes back, rolls out to the left side, turns up the corner. He'll have the first down. It'll be very close to it. I tell you, Blanter has been outstanding. Now. He's really been the key to the Plattsmouth offense. 
Rademacher in there to make the stop. He hit him and tried to drive him back. However, from our vantage point, when we're right in line with the speed, it looks as though he has enough yardage to make it. More about three of us sport boosters include Bannon Oil Fertilizer Plant in Tecumseh, Hasselback Pharmacy in Tecumseh, Veterans Club in Tecumseh, Tecumseh Grain Company, Harvest Bowl in Tecumseh, Rightway Heating and Air Conditioning in Tecumseh, Tecumseh Red Ring Company, Larry's OK Tire in Tecumseh, Farmers Education Cooperative Association in Table Rock, and Binder Brothers Ready Mix and Lumber in Table Rock. This is KMAZ, Stereo 93, Beatrice, Nebraska. Here's Sports Manager Steve Rose. Thank you much, Bill Lamb. Trigger it is first and 10 for Plaster as they operate from their own 42-yard line. Up over that ball is the 5'670 pound senior Rich Miller, small center, but he's done the job tonight. Blaster quarterback in the wishbone. Comes back, fakes to the fullback, then gives it, I guess he gave it to the fullback. A fumble on the play, and a lift on it. As like that. the to the Titan Club, boy, that's what they were listening to. That's kind of a thing. Boy, that's the most excited I've seen the Titans all night. I guess they wanted that one break. They finally got one. And the Titan fans really came to their feet. I wasn't sure who recovered the football. The ball shot about four yards ahead of where he was hit. Steve Al still looking back to see who made the tackle. And that ball just shot out of there. And Abbott was on top of it. Great break. They needed that. So Abbott was the man to recover the fumble. It'll be Veer Formation Hoover, first and ten, operating at the 47-yard line of Plasma. Takes the one that comes back to Balderson. Scoots over, takes two tackles. What a run by Balderson. He picked up about six yards, but he should have been thrown for a loss. He scooted away from about four different pursuers and doing an outstanding job. He's the man they're calling on tonight with Russell Robinson out of there. Robinson uh, in the playoffs well, has a uh, run for... Robinson ran for 261 yards in the playoffs. <coughs> and, he, me. and he has also scored, he scored nine touchdowns in the regular season, so they do miss him out of the lineup tonight. Their formation, open in the slot on the left side, second down and four. As they mark the ball just short of the 40-yard line. They scoop it back on a reverse to Pellison. He's got running room. Out to the 40, to the 35-yard line. Spins, breaks one tackle, brought down at the 35 of Plasma. Well, they had uh, Kenton Oldman and Randy Rodemaker out there blocking. Had it set up pretty well. One of the uh, menace was who uh, got, off, got off the block by the Norris uh, uh, offensive man was able to make the tackle. But a first down in the fine play. Well, big drive right here for the Titans in that break. And the way the crowd came to their feet, bro, is just what the Titans were looking for. It looks like we filled the stands a little bit more after halftime. A few more people have showed up. We have about 5,000 here at Seacrest Field. 558 to go in the first half, in the third quarter. 19 to 13, Plaza the plays with Norris. In good field position at the Plaza 35. They scoop it deep to Ballerson. Runs around on the right side, tries to look for running room. And he'll just get back to the original line of scrimmage. They pitched a deep to him about the 40. He got back to the 35, and that was all she rose. Good defense again by Plaston. Top man is out there to make the stop. Yeah, Scott Moses out there trying to blo uh, to block, and he actually ended up with two men out there, and they're running loudly along the line of scrimmage, and he just couldn't get them both. Bill Plaston has, has read this Norris offense so very well that uh, on those pitches, they have everybody pursuing, and it's really very, very difficult to get some good blocks. Open and Rademacher each take uh, one side of the field to split wide. So they're on second down and nine. Barks him out. Takes the snap, comes back, wants the pass. Now he goes short, and it's almost picked off and finally knocked down. He faked a one man over the middle. Looked like he was going to try to go long to open. As Rich Chondrak come in to knock the ball down. That'll bring up a third down and nine. Here's a big play. It'll be third and nine for Norris at the... Uh, 34-yard line of Plasman. 509 to go third quarter. Plasman leading 19 to 13. Of course, uh, Norris would love to try to march this one in. That would change momentum quite a bit. Oldman will come wide to the left side. Rademacher will go to the short side of the field on the right. Balderson and Hunick, the running back. Hoover waits for the snap, comes back, takes the Hunick. Now with the pass, he goes long, looks for Oldman out there. Oh, he almost caught the football. Menace was step for step with him. Almost the same thing we saw where Oldman was able to steal the football. He almost stole the football right after he, uh, where he did steal one at the goal line for the touchdown. That time, uh, Oldman had the football that was knocked uh, loose by Menace, and then Oldman went down and almost caught it again. And now a timeout called by Dennis Poole, the North Titans, on a fourth down and nine from the 34-yard line of Plattsmouth with the timeout. 5.03 to go in the third quarter. A score, Plattsmouth 19, Norris 13. Of course, you and I had the opportunity to see Norris and Plattsmouth go to the district title of basketball last year. The two to Edis boys, a big key. Here it is, big fourth and nine. Norris will go for it at the 34-yard line of Plattsmouth. Big play here. 
They take the one man, they come out of the reverse play, try to turn a corner. It's open, he's scooped it out on the pass. He can't find the man, Plains. Plains was open. Open did not get a good pass. And he may have been smarter to run at that time, bro. He had some open field on the left side, but he saw the open man. Craig Plains was out there, and Kenton just not able to get a good pass. Well, they had a little razzle-dazzle, or a lot of razzle-dazzle on that thing with Kenton Oldman. The wingback set on the right side, came back, get the pitch, and I thought it was going to be a wingback reverse. It was a wingback halfback pass, and uh, just slightly overthrown. So Plattsmouth will have that football again, and once again, Comes back, fakes the one, then goes to the left side to go up the middle with the first down. And there is a fumble on the play. Let's see who has it. Norris may have the football again, and they do. Oh, well, now, how about that? This is like a videotape replay. Almost the exact same thing that happened on the other series. And uh, again, Norris will have it almost the same spot, the 49 yard line. And uh, again, the, the Titan fans, when they see that break, they just really get excited. And that's the second fumble in a row. They had the first down, and again, very difficult to pick up who fumbled that football because it was Schneider. Uh, it was Schneider. And uh, he fumbled the football taken by the West at the 49-yard line of Plasma. So again, with good field position, the Titans will see if they can get something going. As Oldman comes to the left side, Rodemaker this time on the right. Unique and Baldur's in on the setbacks. They go Russell Roberts. Robert, Russell Robinson, he's got some running room. He's got the football out to the 40. And it's knocked down and out at the 36 yard line. We've been late no right for double R. Russell Robinson. That man can scoot in the crowd. You can just tell the electricity. As when they saw Russell Robinson get the football, this crowd came to life. Russ is an outstanding running back. Steve, I was going to tell you just before they went to the offense that he wasn't on the last defensive series. And I was going to say, I was questioning whether he'd be back offensively, but he's back and running. Quicksilver. Robertson on the left side. And uh, it will be Barbison on the right in the running back. Hoover will keep the football. Got running room up to the 40. And he crosses the 25-yard line up to the 21-yard line. About a 15-yard pickup for Rudy Hoover. And I tell you, with Russell Robertson in there, they all keyed on Russell. They went right after him. Hoover, the outstanding, uh, very smart, quick quarterback, as Bill calls him, Silky Smooth, just turned the corner and got down to the 22-yard line. Outstanding play by Lenny Hoover. And the Titans fans up on their feet as they smell a possible... Score right now. This is the Titan offense that we're looking for. What a difference Russell Robertson makes. Robertson and Borlison are the setbacks. Two wide receivers, one on each side of the field. Scooting down the line, they give it up the middle. And I believe it's Robertson again. Robertson with a good game. And this crowd right up on their feet, bro. They refuse to sit down. They're having a great time. As they're looking for Norris to come back, Norris trailing 19 to 13, 310 to go in the third quarter. And I'm going to say right away on the way up here, Bill Lamkerger said he looked for a very close, tight ball game. And so far, he has got everything right on the money. You know, Bill, when you're hot, you're hot, you're hot tonight. You've got a lot of things right tonight. Well, I tell you, with Russell Robinson, that's just an entirely new dimension. That fires everybody up in that line, too. Here's Hoover, scoops it down, gives it to Paulson, and Paulson. Gets oh. across to the 15-yard uh, line. As he pulls his way, you know, Eddie Baldus has played an outstanding game tonight. They've really gone to him a lot, and they've called on him so many times, and uh, you've really got to take your head off to Eddie Balderson because he has not been the number one back uh, all year long. He has really been called on to do a lot of blocking and, and, and such, and Eddie has done an outstanding job tonight. He really has, Steve, because he was stopped with after about a yard game, and he just would not be denied and got attacked a couple real harder yards on there. Big third down, a three situation for the Plattsmouth 15. Hoover pitches it back to Robertson, turns the corner to the 15, the 10, a knockdown, at, enough for the first down at the 10-yard line. There he is, Russell Robertson, his hand heavily taped. It is his right hand. And look right, Randy Rademacher, right over to shake his hand. And the Titan fans are just ecstatic. They just can't believe how much Russell Robertson has sparked this uh, crowd along with his players. Oldman is always the first man to break the huddle. He'll go over to the right side. Vera formation. It'll be first and, uh, well, very close. They could possibly get a first down without making the touchdowns. Very close to the 10-yard line. Hoover comes back. Takes the one, that gives it back to Robertson. This time, Robertson carrying people down inside the 10, down the 8-yard line. Four people on his back, and he refuses to go down. 
Glassmith set in almost what you would call a flex defense. Now they have three men right up on the line of scrimmage. The, the uh, linebackers about a step back, and they want to fill that gap and just, just decide where that running play is going to go. 132 to go, third quarter. Glassmith leads Norris 19 to 13. Rattlebaker comes out to the left side, open goes to the right. Robertson and Balderson, your setback. Quarterback Lenny Hoover. The flying senior parks on, scoops down the right side, keeps the football, now pitches back to last goal. Robinson tries to turn the corner, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Actually, Lenny Hoover lost the yardage on the pitch. He had it about the four-yard line. It was hoping Robinson could trail through, but that pursuing plasma defense comes in to make the stop. And they're going to mark it back a little bit farther than I thought. It'll be close to the seven-yard line. It's going to be about third and seven. Big play here for the Titans. Dave Lutzer was in and drove him out of bounds, and I looked as though the the Norris uh, players got a little jammed up along. They had too many players all in one spot there, and they had the defense spread right out, and then there's too many offensive players there. Well, they'll try to spread them out to the wide side of the field on the left this time. Right Baker and Oatman both on the left side. Let's see if Hoover will scoot out to the left side. He rolls out, looks for Oatman, and he threw this one in the ground. I think that time Lenny made the smart move. Oatman was covered very well. A big rush uh, coming on Hoover as Rich Andrak uh, putting the rush on Hoover, and Lenny, I think, just threw that one in the ground. That was a smart play that time, Burl, because had he tried to throw it, I think it could have been picked off because double coverage on Kenton Oatman, and that's going to bring up a big fourth down, fourth down and uh, seven. Well, I think Dennis Poole is going to think about this, and they're going to have a call timeout. 33 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. Our score, Norris, 13, Plasmuth leading it by six with 19. So it's fourth and goal from about the seven-yard line. And uh, right now, this has got to be about as big a play as you're going to have because they win at the back uh, of Norris, and they would like to, to pass that thing in there. Here comes Rademacher and Oatman wide on the wide side of the field to the left. Lenny has three straight incompletions. It'll be their formation. Hoover at quarterback. Here come the Titan fans to their feet. On fourth down, Hoover's back to pass. Looks over the middle, wants to go to Pre. He got it. What a catch. He got it. What a catch in the end zone. Two for Norris. I believe it was Craig Payne. Yep. It's the tight end, and I got one right that time. As they tried to send the two wide receivers to the left side, Plattsburgh went, went, went with them. Oh, they and suddenly it's a tie ball game, 19 to 19. Here's a big play. So it's fourth down and seven. The mighty Norris offense got in gear, and they went to the, the man that I thought they would, Craig Prange. And Prange now. Tied the score up on a seven yard. Here's the extra oh, point by Oldman. No try for the one. They put it down. Here's the snap. A good snap. It's up. It's good. Nice job by playing that football by the Magic Man, Mark Majeski. You bet you. It's kind of a wobbly snap. He put it down. Got a nice placement. A point and point there. And suddenly Norris has gone on top. 20 to 19. 27 seconds to go in the third quarter. Mark's dad said, well, he says, uh, Mark's kind of like Dave Hum. And that's what Dave Hum is. He came and put the thing up. More of our three of our sport boosts, Arbor State and Weimar. Weimar bowling lanes. Spots the Blue Devils end with the possession of the football at their own 32. So after three quarters of play in the Class B state title game, as the Titan fans come to their feet, Noah's leads it over Class the 20 to 19. The Three Rivers Sport Boosters presentation. Let's say thank you to the Smart and Co-op Elevator, Case Powered Equipment in Beatrice, Farmers Drain of Portland, Bound Power Bush Hog. Of old Mo, and that's called momentum. And Norris certainly has it now. And the last play, that defense went wild. As now they're trying to protect that one-point lead. As we have 12 minutes to go to find out who the Class B 1979 state football champions will be in the state of Nebraska. As Wasser comes back right side, got the money run. Oh, he hit! There, oh man, was he nailed by Ken Hunick. Hunick, dang, there took his legs off as he hit him right in the thighs and just brought him to the ground in a hurry. I'll pick up a round three to bring up third down and seven with the ball at the 35-yard line of Plattsmith. Super job there because, Steve, I thought he was going to go for big yardage, but an excellent open field tackle. We should give Tim some credit. He played for Robertson when Robertson was hurt. Never once got to carry the football, but he did some great blocking. Watson comes out in that wishbone on third down and seven. Could be a big play here. Watson scoots down the line the right side. He's had a rush now, pitches it back. Oh, and down he goes for a big loss. Oh, and it's back to Tully, and there to meet him was Kenton Oldman. 
Also, Steve Elsey, and it doesn't Steve play left defensive end? He sure does. Well, he, he came across the, the field. He, he came all the way across the field, Pearl, as you called it. And there was Kent Oatman to make the stop for a loss, and that'll bring up fourth down and ten at the 32-yard line of Plattsmith. And they show putt, but you never know. Todd Meadows back there to do the booting. Remember, he uh, ran about 99 yards. Just came short of missing a touchdown earlier in the first half. Here's a high booming kick taken at the 30-yard line by Hunick, and down he goes. He is hit, and hit hard by Carroll Dexter. Dexter hit him just as he caught the ball and even threw him for about a yard loss. It'll be first and ten for Norris at their own 29-yard line, and Tim Hunick was hit hard. And that's how Tim is impressed me, bro. He has uh, come in and been called on and uh, really rose to the occasion. And he's a junior, one of the few juniors that's seen a lot of playing time tonight. And they're going to be glad to have this kid back next year. Rademacher and Oatman both go to the wide side of the field on the left. Veer formation. Hoover remains at quarterback. Robertson and Balderson are the running backs. They come back, they think, they give it to Balderson, goes left side, finds some running room, picks up about four yards, a nice pop there again. Outstanding blocking over on the right side of the line by Kevin Schlake and Scott Motes. Well, it's kind of, uh, I guess it, it's kind of uh, the thing we've talked about this offensive line. Tonight they've been going to the right side against uh, Pius. They went to the left side a lot. So I guess they, they figure both sides of the line can do it for them. Of course, the, the fellow that really anchors them is that center, Tim Bradley, 2363 senior. One thing about it, Steve, I don't think they run quite as they haven't run as many misdirection plays. Just running right straight ahead of those little slants going in there. That's the reason why we're seeing uh, Eddie Ballerson getting yards on that right side. Second down and six. They go to Robertson. He's got a big hole. Goes up the 42nd hole. Got the first down as he gets out to the 43-yard line. Russell Robertson, like a fine locksmith, picking the keyholes. And he just scoot in and out. I'd say he's got some weight movement there and picked up the fine yardage on the play to get first and 10 for Norris at their own 44-yard line, and suddenly Norris looking like the team we've seen in the other playoff game. Robertson has 35 yards and six carries here in the second half. There goes that flip-flop of Norris as uh, they go in the huddle one way, and uh, Radebaker and Oatman will come out a different way. As they come back out of the mirror, first and 10, Hoover comes back, gives it to Balderson. He scoots across the 45 to the 46-yard line, Eddie Balderson. They can find the run. A penalty flag goes down. I think we're going to have a uh, either late hit or a face, mask. face mask. And listen to this Norris crowd on that one. I tell you, these tight fans, bro, I tell you, when they get excited, they get downright excited. They uh, they have really gotten excited all the breaks. You know, in the first half, all the breaks did go past this way. We mentioned that. And they did get all the breaks. Well, in the second half, all the breaks so far have gone uh, to Norris. And with 9.09 to go in the ballgame, Norris with a 20 to 19 lead, a very, very slim one point uh, lead over these tough, tough Plasmus Blue Devils. And Norris will have it first and 10 on the Plasmus 40 yard line. I think they'd be content just to keep grinding it out now. We'll see what they do now. I don't know if Lane's going to put it in the air or not. He's. Hoover with the football. Takes one way, comes back on the misdirection. This time to Ballison. Ballison with a nice run. Gets about four on the play as he gets it up to the 44 yard line. And, bro, I don't know if we've mentioned. That Lenny Hoover does call most of his own plays right. and uh, doing an outstanding job of it. Another thing we should mention, I believe Plattsmouth and Norris will be in the same conference next year. I didn't get a chance to talk to Dr. Nozzle about that. And I do believe I talked to Wayne Johnson one time, and I believe he did say a timeout called on the field by Plattsmouth. They called the, the timeout with 8.51 to go in the ballgame on the score. Norris, 20, Plattsmouth, 19. Moth Three River Sport Boosters are Farmers Union Co-op Association, Steiner, Elk Creek, and Burchard, Philly Tavern, Philly Bank, Hall's Grocery in Philly, Yoy Farm Supply in Philly, also the State Bank of Burchard, Quarry Brothers Mortuary in Pawnee City, Pawnee Livestock Incorporated in Pawnee City, Quarry Brothers Furniture in Pawnee City, and Lewis and Crawford Credit Association. Steve, one of the things I noticed in this last drive that's been coming down the field is that Lenny Hoover now has been able to do some of those things that he does so well, and that is bring that ball up in front of your face, let everybody see it, then down it comes, and he's been able to, to do some of those things we, we expect him to do. Offensive line's getting the job done. That is uh, one of the main things. I, I still think of Russell Robertson has really been the key oh, in the second yeah, half. Got right. Everybody fired up. That offensive line is really fired up. On second down and six, they come to Paulson. Beautiful hole. Five goes down. He gets a big hole up the middle. Finally brought down to the 24-yard line. But there may be some holding. We'll wait and see. 
A flag went down as Ballerton crossed the 30 yard line, got down to the 24. Outstanding run by Eddie Ballerton. It is offensive holding. I thought I saw it. 8.37 to go in the ball game. Norris leads it by 1, 20 to 19. It's second down. And about uh, 20 to go for a first down. Back to pass is Hoover. Against the wind, almost picked off. He didn't get a good pass off as Hutton out there to knock it down. He was looking for Craig Prange, and there they are going to that tight end again. But not a good pass by Lenny Hoover tonight, and he has not had a good night tonight passing. Well, Mark Pulsifer was over there and defended against that in, uh, in the games that we saw previous to this. Usually they go down and, and let uh, Ken Oltman take, usually takes a couple of them down. However, Pulsifer saw Oltman going down. He was covered pretty well by Jeff Wilde. So he went over and picked up the short man, did a good job. Well, I just noted that Lenny Hoover does have in one of his rest tape tonight, I believe. It looks as though he has one of his rest tape up, has a hyperextended knee, and that may be bothering him a bit. Third down and about an acre to go. They think to two men, and now he wants to go deep. He's got, he's got, he's got it, 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 he Right at the 25-yard line, it would have been enough for the first down, but Rademacher just simply had to wait for the ball to get to him. Another, not, not a good pass again by Lenny. Had he thrown that one on the money, it would have been good for six, because Rademacher can fly. Randy tried to slow up, but he tried to come back for the ball, and when he, when he tried to come back, he lost his footing and was not able to hang on to the football. So Hoover will go back to punt the football, standing at his own 37-yard line. Hutton drops deep for Plattsman. Here's the boot by Hoover. He gets a short boot, picking up by the 32-yard line by Hutton. Gets out to the 35 and brought down at the 38-yard line. Good coverage on the play. 28, Steve. As Kevin Flake on the 28-yard line. So Flake just... in to make the stop. Flake played in a good ball game tonight. He sure has. You know, he's, he's one of the smaller linemen, 165-pound guard. You know, when you're, uh, he's flanked by 230 Tim Rutley and 207 Scott Motes. It kind of makes you look small out there, but he plays with it very well. 8 one to go in the ball game. 20-19, Norris leads it by one. Plasman trying to move the football at their own 28-yard line. Out of the wishbone, back comes Blotzer. He wanted to pass, now pitches it back deep to Tuller. Tuller, he knocks out of bounds after about a five-yard pickup. They had Blotzer behind the line of scrimmage, and Blotzer with a nice pitch back. And Super good tough. pursuit by Oldman, otherwise Tully might even went farther. Super job uh, by the quarterback Dave Blotzer, Steve. You know, I thought he was he was caught uh, behind the line of scrimmage and just pitched that thing off as he was on the way down to the ground. So this this kid's a good athlete too. That's it. A receiver wide to the left side, and a man in the slot as they come out. Well, they come out with a single man back. Or whether they come out in that split there. It's a split there. Back to pass is Blotzer. They slide to one side. He's being rushed hard by Wallenberg. Finally, he dumps it off. And we're going to have a pass interference. That was uh, bad coverage that time. Uh, let's see. In their defending, it'll be called on Kevin Slake. Kevin that time, well, he was actually trying to fight off a block. Mm -hmm. And so and it, it, could, it could have been called either way. They will call it against Norris. But that really could, could have been called either way. And that's what the fans of Norris are complaining right. about. Because he, it looked, the, the, he was trying to fight off a block. And it could have been team, uh, offensive pass interference. But they'll call it against Norris. And uh, I'm not so sure if, if the if that was a judgment call. I guess I'm not really going to say because no. it, was, it was hard to tell. It really was. It was very difficult to call. Steve Elsey had a great rush on Blotzer, and yeah. uh, and boy, I tell you, in the defense of the Norris, you know, he was he was just fighting off a block, and it ended up that Blotzer just dumped it off, and he had to be in the vicinity. Right. Uh, Norris it could have went either way, and of course, Norris fans are upset with the call, but I, you know, I'm not sure of the ruling, so I'm not really going to say it no. because. Uh, uh, you know, he was fighting off the block, but whether or not he was interfering with the pass, it's hard to say. So anyway, how do you work it? It's going to be first and ten at the 49-yard line uh, of Plattsman. The Blue Devils with the football. Blotzer again barks him out loud and clear. They trail by one. He comes back, gives it to Hutton. Hutton hit at the line, scoops off two people, and comes up to the 45-yard line. And the uh, North Knights fans upset again. They wanted a late hit. There was kind of a late block there. But they figured the player's momentum carrying them into the North Titan player, and uh, nothing called there. Titan fans just a little bit on the edge of their seats. And their team leads by only one, 20 to 19, 7 19 to go in this ball game. Class B state title on the line. Steve Crossfield will make it. Hang on to your hats from now on. Uh, Steve Rose along with Bill Lamker again. Join this one on KMAZ Beatrice. Second down and 
Bye-bye. Oh, what a pass in the middle of the Marty Lowry. Russell Robertson. Now, Russell Robertson on a blitz out of the quarterback. <laughs> Lowry opened up the hole with a little guard. He just moved it aside. Yeah, that's Russell Robertson. 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 Yeah, that's Russell and actually, you got to get play to that defensive line. Open that hole up to Robertson to blitz through. Blocker didn't know what hit him. He didn't have a pair. A third down. They play here. They think they show blitz. They think blitz. They come back. They give it to Hutton right side. And he's nailed hard. All I see is red shirt. Just as well say all about eight or 11 Titan players in to help make the stop. Steve Elsey again on that right side. Elsey's played outstanding tonight. Marty we got Lowry. Marty Lowry, Kevin Slate, they're all there. That whole right side of the defense. And Steve Elsey gets up limping a bit. They don't want to lose him. He's not about to come out of the ball game. We talked to his dad before the ball game tonight. Another one of Burl's golf buddies, and uh, he's a pretty good golfer, by the way. 5.56 to go in the ball game. Big fourth down to five. They show punt. Metis back standing at his own 40. He gets the football. Gets the kick away. Kind of a high kick. Will hit down about the 12-yard line and scoot down to the 5. It goes out of bounds at the 4-yard line. What a kick by Ty Bettis. Lenny Hoover wanted to run with it, but they kicked away from Lenny, and he never really got a chance to get to the football. Bettis kicked it very, very high to allow his coverage to get down there, and then kicked it kind of a squib. So it bounced and rolled. And here's the 10-yard line. What out bounds at the 4 to Norris with their backs against the wall. They really need to get out of the hole here. If pass of defense comes through, the Blue Devils will have excellent field position. So big, big series of plays here. We've said about every series from here on out. 5.40 to go in the ball game. Titans lead by only one. Four-yard line. And here's where you got to be careful with the football. Hoover brings them out in the veer. Robertson and Balderson. The running back, they give it to Balderson over the left side. He stacked up the line of scrimmage. Kurt Hutton there to beat him in a hurry. So that plasma defense continues to play out steady. Burrell did a job there. Why don't you give us that Hanover score once again? Okay, the Hanover score. Hanover leading by a score of 28 to 7 at the end of three quarters. Looks right. like those Hanover Wildcats are state tournament bound, state championship bound. Right. They'll play next Saturday at 1.30, and uh, most likely a very good chance they might be at home. Oh, that'd be great. That would be super for the Hanover fans. Hoover. On second down at eight, comes back and oh, oh to Robinson breaks up big hole for him, and he just refuses to go down. It took one, two, three, four pass with defenders to finally bring him down. Blotcher in there to make the initial stop. It got some assistance by Larry Ashwine, and right now the coach is very concerned. 4:51 to go in the ball game. No one leads it 20 to 19, one point lead. They trail 19 to 13 at the end of the half. Big third down play. Third down on about a foot and a half to go. One wide receiver goes to the left. They come back. Hoover goes right up the middle and he has the first down easily. Boy, I just give Tim Rutley the call and he'll blow a hole open for you. Rutley just simply just really knocked open a hole and realized Lenny Hoover got up that time. He got up very, very gingerly on that leg. That leg apparently bothering quite a bit. He could barely stand up on it. But then uh, just kind of gingerly walked back to the huddle. But they got the first down, that's the important thing, at the 15-yard line, their own 15. Well, there's your two hands flip-flopping back and forth. <laughs> they always like to throw that defense a little bit. Yep, right at me. I mean, on defense has to shift back with them. Holman goes very, very wide to the left. Right at on the short side of the field. Ballerson. And Robertson, you're running back. So you give it to Robertson. He's hit right at the line. Outstanding defensive play. Let's say good who, penetration that we'll time. See who and made that stop? Troy Porter was through there, Steve. He, he got good penetration. Got to Russell before he could even start those knees to turn. When he's when he, he, if, if you can see those knees turn, you can figure he's already run five yards. Are you from Quicksilver? Quicksilver in person. They didn't give him a chance that time because Porter just did an excellent job. That penetration got uh, Russell right in the backfield. Another first down, and the Norris would really be eating that clock up. They've really done it so far here in the fourth quarter. 3.36 to go in the ball game. On second down and eight from their own 17-yard line, Hoover takes the football, pitches it deep to Robertson, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. He'll be thrown for about a two-yard loss back at the 15-yard line. All right, Porter again, Steve. So. Porter smelled, smelled it out as he got some assistance in there by Dennis Larson. 
And those two fellas did a very good defensive play there. So third down and 10. Here's uh, what it would love to get if they could just get a first down here with three minutes to go. They might be able to really well, use up the clock. Plenty is almost going to have to go to the air, although he has not been very successful. Five straight in. And again, a wind of about 10 to 15 miles per hour gusting against the Titans. In motion goes Hoover, or uh, Oldman. Oldman in motion. They come back. They're thinking. They give it to Paulus. He's got some running room. He's out to the 20, the 25, and that's got it all up at the 37 yard line. Close to the 40 yard line. Beautiful play. And look at look at uh, Coach Pence and Coach uh, Schmutty just going nuts down the sideline as the play was right in front of them. Dallas and broke free as they faked it to Robinson. It was Oldman going in motion that really threw off the Plasma's defense. Well, I'll tell you, if Letty Hoover called that, and that was a super call because it looked like Pass, they had uh, Oldman in motion to the left side. I think everybody thought he was going to go to the air. They had a, oh, a fantastic opening right up the middle. He came through there and got a fine run. Big first down. I have to think real hard, but I don't remember seeing anyone come off the sidelines that last place that Hoover would have had a call his own play. It was an outstanding call. It'll be first and ten. At the 32-37 yard line, they go to Robertson up the middle. He gets close to the 40. And he's stacked up there by a host of blue jerseys. That last play could have been the biggest play in this ball game. 2:30 to go in the ball game. Norris leads it 20 to 19. The Titans remember trail at halftime, 19 to 13. They got on the scoreboard first to lead it 7-0. It's tied up at seven apiece. Plattsmouth went ahead 13 to seven. Norris came back to tie 13 to 13. Plattsmouth went ahead 19 to 13, and Norris came back. In the third quarter to go ahead 20 to 19, that's how the score stands now with 2.08 to go and counting. Second down and six. At the 40 yard line are the Norris Titans. Hoover, quarterback, with a wide receiver each side of the field. Waits for the snap, comes back, takes the one man. Here's that same play. This time they go to Robertson, and he doesn't get too much. They went to the same place they went to Balderson. And now I see another one of those Titans moving around. This is Kevin Schlake. Schlake uh, hit the leg. You know, Kevin. He's not very big at all, 165 pounds and 5'10". That's about the same size I was in a Class D school. Class D, a lot bigger than fellas. And I tell you, it's not easy for a small lineman. Probably using some of that crab blocking, Burl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talked about that on the way up. 128 to go in a ball game. A first down here might sit you. Down. Third down and about uh, five to go. So big play for the Titans. In motion again goes open. Back, they fake the one back to the same play they had before. Robinson breaks through. He's at the 50 down to the 47 yard line. And the door is slammed. Door is on the way. Well, they knew that first down would really, uh, well, with the game's not over, but I, if, if Norris can keep from dropping the big skid right now, it doesn't look too bad. 2019 lead, one minute and 11 to play, another first down. That's that same play they went with when they sent Oldman in. What they did is they knew that Plasmus had a double cover, and they sent Oldman in motion. Two fellows went to the side of the field where Oldman went and left the other side open. They faked it to the same side Oldman went and then left the back door open. Robertson came through with a clutch play, first and 10 Norris from the class of the 47 yard line. Hoover comes back, gives it to Balderson, breaks across the 45, rocked down to the 40 yard line, 44 seconds to go. Now they can almost just lay on the football as they went on and Plattsmouth will call a timeout. So with 40 seconds to go in the ball game, Plattsmouth calling the timeout our score. Norris, 20, Plattsmouth, 19. Well, uh, Dennis Poole looks like he's pretty calm out there. He and Lenny Hoover are probably the two calmest guys in the football field right now. They're a couple of smooth ones, aren't they, Earl? <laughs> uh, they really are. Uh, Dennis Poole, kind of a quiet, reserve type guy, too, but when he uh, comes through in the clutch quite often also, and uh, I tell you, he is an outstanding coach. We mentioned the McCook connection, Schmuddy and uh, and uh, Dennis Poole, and Poole looking for his first state title go right along with Jerry Schmuddy. And uh, I think Ron Seaver, the wrestling coach, he's about ready for one, too. And he, uh, he has some of these outstanding people coming back. So 40 seconds to go in the ball game, 20 to 19, one point lead for the Norris Titans. 33 seconds to go in the ball game, one point lead for Norris as they look for that Class B state title. And the Titans fans can feel it. Dennis Poole just kind of looks to the ground as he doesn't want to show that satisfaction. He is. He's kind of like Yogi Berra. It's not over until it's over. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you, that 17-yard, about 17-yard run, I think, of Eddie Balders, when they were back there inside their 20-yard line, was a big run of the evening, Steve, as far as I'm concerned. Cougar on third down and five. Let's see what he'll do here. here. Comes back, he gives it off to Balderson, breaks over. He'll be close to the first down, crosses the 40, 
And now to about the 37-yard line, and they'll stop the clock with 25 seconds to go. Did you see that weird formation they were in that time? They had the two setbacks, which is, well, you, it's a bear, it's a pro set, whatever you want to call it. And then, uh, um, yeah. Ben Ken Oltman was about four yards behind the right halfback, standing back there. I don't know what he was in case of let drop the ball and somebody ran for, run for a touchdown. He's going to tackle him, I guess. And it was kind of, it was really almost close to, uh, kind of like an old wing T almost. You know? And they got another first down. They yeah. have their first down, and that will nail it with 25 seconds to go. And the Titans can feel it now. Let's see. If, and look at look at Spuddy, Coach Spuddy and Coach Poole hugging each other on the sidelines. All the coaches right now. Kind of kind of looks like a happy crowd down there. They're hugging and kissing, and they're a happy bunch. Well, I tell you, I don't think uh, probably Jerry Smuddy is, is as happy as anybody down there. He knows what a thrill it is to be a Class of D champion, having won one eight months ago. And he is a part of this one, too, because he's one of the assistant coaches there. Dennis Poole, boy, I tell you, these, these 12 seconds, we'll let the crowd, let's see if they count it down. 10 seconds to go. Titan fans just clapping now. And listen, we'll let you listen to the crowd as they count it down. That's it. The Class D state title goes to the Noah's Titans. They win it by one. Noah's 20, Plattsburgh 19. No, 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 it's Titans. Okay, okay, Steve, I'm gonna, we can have got, this other mic here. Well, well, why don't we do that? Why don't we grab that other mic here? We are the, uh, tell you, the, uh, the coaches are all being mobbed out there, so we're gonna, we're not gonna settle for anything less than the best. We're gonna talk to the principal, Mr. Rex Pig. Rex, what do you think is gonna do to those Norris Titans? Well, I'll tell you, those Norris Titans are pretty great. I think we got the greatest bunch of kids in the world, and I know we got the best coaches in the world there. Well, you, you, and, you and the superintendent in agreement on that. Uh, you know, one of the things that Steve and I talked about on the way up here, uh, we saw the Norris basketball team last year, and sometimes in the early portions of the ball game, it looks as though they had to wait to, thing, to get things all together. Uh, Plasmus and I had had some big plays in that first half, and it looked as though the Titans were maybe on the ropes. We weren't. We hadn't uh, lost uh, faith in them at all. We talked about it at halftime. Uh, we expected them to come out and play a whale of a ball game. They really did in that second half. They sure did. I uh, I didn't lose faith in them at the half. I was really stunned on that last touchdown, the first half. I didn't. Uh, we kind of went sleep there a little, I think. But the boys didn't go to sleep the second half. I think. Uh, I think we call that. Uh, well, it was kind of a cheap. I want to not say a cheap one, but it was one of those that you would rather not see happen, you know, just in the, in the closing seconds that way, and I thought maybe the defense let down just a little bit. Yeah, they did, but I want to say something else, too. I thought uh, Plasma played uh, one heck of a football game. Right. We don't want to take anything away from them, either. No, sir, that's right. We thought, uh, we were talking about Steve and I, that, that uh, there, we had said what a fine job the Norris offensive line had done all year, and really that defensive line was kind of dominating things there in that first half. Plasma, great job, uh, but uh, they, they got the big play. Uh, a fine team. You don't get into the finals of a Class B championship unless you've got a good ball team. We had two great ball teams here tonight. We did. Uh, you think you're gonna? What are you gonna do? Uh, are you gonna declare a one-day holiday come Monday? Uh, no, I think we'll give, we'll give them Saturday and Sunday off, and uh, I think Coach Muddy is about ready to start throwing that round ball around. Okay, well, uh, they will They will start uh, both girls and boys uh, basketball at that time. And, uh, Rex, uh, we're about ready to throw it back to the station. But we, uh, one more question for you. This is your the school's third state title they've had, and I believe in the last two years, state track uh, title, last year the boys' basketball. And, and this one's so quick. It's the fourth in the last three years. The girls won it two years in a row. Okay. You got me. <laughs> I don't know if I was here on the first one. So. <laughs> so I might get by on that one. Okay, the fourth major, you know, fourth state title for you. What kind of atmosphere is that created in a school like Norris? You're talking about a school made up of small communities of uh, 100 to 150 people uh, to 200 people and, and about, what, 15? I don't know how many there is. It seems like there's a million. Every time I turn around, Burrow comes up with another one that I'm not sure of. That's got to make a community out of the school for Norris, and it has to be a great feeling for administrators to see all these state title trophies sitting in there and realize that these kids have really grown to be part of each other in a real big happy family. That's right. It's not uh, the various towns when the kids get together. It's Norris. They don't uh, they don't call themselves what towns they're from. They're from Norris. 
<laughs> okay, well, That's thank great. you very much. Rex, That's, go ahead, Rex, thank you so much for coming in here. Thank you. Uh, we, we said we wanted the best. We couldn't talk to coaches, but we got uh, the best anyway. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in basketball season, okay, buddy? Yeah, we'll be around. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye. Okay, well, Bill, uh, maybe you got a couple of quick closing comments for you. I guess I'm very impressed with Norris uh, on the way they came back. Uh, they trailed. They had their backs against the wall, but they came back to win the ball game. I think that's the most impressive thing for me tonight. I think that's right, Steve. I, I, I keep thinking about uh, uh, the, the, the two plays that stick, stick in my mind. First of all, Bob Phil, <laughs> Fuller calling that uh, fake punt uh, on his own 13-yard uh, line early in the ball game like that. I thought that, that took a, a really lot of gumption. The other one, here comes Ron Steverson. I don't know whether he was going to come up here or not. Maybe we can get just a couple words with him if he, if he will come up here. And the other one, one of course, was the was the big uh, first down touchdown, uh, first down run by Ed Balderson when Norris was back, and they they had to have a first down with with about uh, five minutes to go. They just had to have a first down to to keep uh, Plasma from getting the ball, Plasma with the wind and everything like that. Well, of course, the play that sticks out in my mind the most, Earl, is uh, the fourth down and seven. Craig Crange, outstanding catch. Craig Craig just yeah. made such a great catch. I just couldn't believe it. And we do have assistant coach uh, Ron Severson. I talked to Dennis Poole earlier in the day, and he said he said he didn't think he'd be able to make it, but he would make uh, the assistant coaches. He, would, <laughs> he said he'd make the assistant coaches earn their earn their pay for the night. So so uh, he's going to make you uh, earn your salary. Uh, Ron, you know at the end of the ball game. When you got that last first down around the Robertson, you coaches are down there hugging and kissing. I thought you guys had to be kind of close, huh? Yeah, we are. They're real bunch, bunch of fun guys to be with. The coaches are all worked hard together. The boys are, you know, they make it. They make it for us. You know, Ron, one thing i got to mention, I know you'll be glad to talk about, there's a couple fellas you're going to be coaching that had outstanding nights tonight. Marty Lowry and Doug Wallenberg, yeah, a couple of wrestlers defense. they have, and they played outstanding. Tremendous defense. Marty Lowry at the middle guard. Pursued so well, and Wally he held in there and did so well, and I don't know, just so great. What's the first words Coach Dennis Bull said when you got in the locker room? I uh, I haven't followed him down there yet. <laughs> you haven't had a chance. No. Your fans kind of bought no. you on the way down, huh? Yeah, he's he just great. He uh, just, you know, he is such a perfectionist as a coach. He just plans everything so well that uh, he does it all really on offense, and Coach Muddy does the defense. We have a week kind of just fill him there and there, and he is a great strategist. Well, I think that you have a, a fantastic relationship between the administration and the coaching staff, the way the uh, administrators talk about you and have a real fine rapport. I wanted to, wanted to say, at the halftime, what you talk about how to control the big play, because Plasma's come up with about three or four big ones that had really hurt you. Yeah, right. Well, we just felt like they hadn't earned anything. We'd given them everything. And if we just sucked it up and played tough in there, why we could have gotten the job done all through the game. We just give them everything they had. So uh, at halftime, we decided we was going to go and what we was going to do on offense, that we still going to have to run that inside beer, go into a twin set, and uh, have Rob, well, we were hurting, first of all, with uh, Russell Robertson out of there. He had a big old bruise on his hand, and so second half when we did get him back in there it gave us another running back see a little dimension and with those counter plays you know came back in there and that's another thing we decided to do at halftime run counter plays at them and they worked well uh, and uh on defense we knew we could do it on defense we just couldn't let them get out behind us you know the big play that we knew it all along the big play they were a big play offense so we had to stop that Craig Prince, uh, winning touchdown catch has to be one that will go down oh, in your mind for a long time. You know, time. He, kinda, he caught a few passes up there, and he dropped one. He had one taken away from him. That one's one that counted. <laughs> that was, I think it was a fine call. What about what about the, the call down here when you had a third down and about three yards to go, five minutes left on the clock? Uh, we thought uh, you had about third down and about eight, I think it was. And I thought, sure as the world, they'd go for a pass. I looked down. Lenny Hoover called a little counter trap or something yeah, up the middle, up the middle. Got a, right up the middle yeah. and got a big gainer by Eddie Baller. We set uh, Oatman in motion, throw out their linebackers, and then we countered, come up with a counter trap right up through the middle. And was did a you know call. Lenny called that play? We, um, yes, he did. That was well, we didn't have any call. We did, I didn't yes, see anybody did. come from the sidelines. No, 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 Lenny, call. Lenny calls most of his game, but you got to realize that he has a lot of communication with Coach Poole. 
knowing the situation, knowing what to call, and Coach Poole has met with all the quarterbacks, and consequently, you know, he's sit down there, and this is what we got to do in this situation, this situation, and uh, just get the job done. Where did Tim Bowman start kicking Sidewinder? I thought that last week he hit him straight off. Well, he wanted to do that all along, but see, last year he had a hamstring pull, and it hampered him almost all during the football season, and, and it, he hurt it last year kicking that way, but it was hurt a little bit before that, and he just hurt it worse. So we didn't want him to kick that way. He wanted to, and besides, he'd hurt his uh, shin bone, and he said it hurt worse to kick straight on than the sideliner, and he worked all week on it. And so I thought, you know, I think that probably kicked it straight on. So. Was, was Mark Keckley suited up tonight? No, he wasn't. He was here. He was here. He was here, but he didn't uh, do that. Okay, because we should mention what a great job he did, and I know he had to feel bad not to have right. the opportunity. Rob, we're going to let you go down and celebrate. Okay. And we hope to see you soon. Yeah. I know I'll be up there talking about wrestling and everything okay. else. So let's we just, just want to thank KMAZ for doing their tremendous job, uh, Merle, and Dean, you guys are just tremendous to us. And we think it's great. East Nebraska sports going for all of us to be here. Hey, that's nice. Okay. That makes it worth it, buddy. Okay. Thanks a Thanks lot. We sure appreciate it. Ron Steverson, just a heck of a gentleman and one heck of a coach. And, and he's been super to us all the time. And okay, Coach, your thoughts after this state championship win? A remarkable group of boys. Remarkable group of boys. The boys came back from that first half. We just made so many mistakes and hurt ourselves. Came back, played with the characters that they played with all year round, and I'm just super proud of them. They came back and did what they had to get done, and, and thank the Lord they're a good group of boys, and it's been a wonderful chance to coach them. What'd you tell them at halftime? They were down by six points. They'd just been stunned by a long Plattsmouth touchdown pass. Well, we just talked about what we had to do offensively. We knew that defensively we just we weren't executing our defense very well, but uh, at, at halftime we just went over the things we had to do that we've done all year long. We just we are making so many little mistakes that hurt us. We stood around a little bit on defense. Offensively, we just decided we had to run a few more dives at them, and we started doing that, and, and it kind of broke the game open a little bit. You lost your first game of the season in Nebraska City by one point. At that time, did you think this was a championship caliber ball club? Yes, I certainly did. I felt all along we had a very good chance this year.